human skulls littered the lab table of Varys, a Vorkarian xenobiologist, as he delighted in the secrets their shattered domes revealed about the resilience of the species, a frightful realization that burned his alien mind. Varys stood before the Intergalactic Scientific Council, bursting with zeal to share his baffling findings on human survivability. Thomas Williams, the sole human representative on the council, listened with growing unease in the audience, fearing what inhumane lengths Varys had gone to in his studies. Varys recounted the Vorkarians' first contact with humans five decades ago, when a crippled Terran exploration ship crashed on the harsh Vor homeworld. Stranded for weeks in the poisonous atmosphere and blazing heat, the humans endured against all odds until rescue arrived, piquing Varys's obsessive fascination. But it was the Council's hungry reception to Varys's extreme experiments, pushing human test subjects to the brink of death, that chilled Thomas to the core. The repulsive nature of the trials made his stomach churn. Yet the alien scientists fired eager questions at Varys, wholly fixated on the tantalizing data, as Thomas fumed in silence, blood boiling at their callous detachment for human life. For if the Council remained blinded by morbid curiosity and sanctioned Varys's work, Thomas's species faced a dark fate as the Vorkarian specimens, forever at the mercy of their vivisection in the name of science. He could not let that grim future come to pass, but how could one human hope to sway an indifferent galaxy that viewed his kind as medieval savages? The stakes for humanity had never been so dire. Thomas pushed his way through the crowd of excited alien scientists, his eyes locked on Varys. The Vorkarian stood tall, basking in the praise of his colleagues. Thomas grabbed Varys by the arm, pulling him aside. We need to talk, Thomas hissed. Those experiments you described, they're unethical, inhumane. You can't treat humans like lab rats. Varys shrugged off Thomas's grip. You humans, always so sentimental. Don't you see the potential here? My research could revolutionize xenobiology. Imagine the breakthroughs we could achieve by studying your species' adaptability. Thomas shook his head. The ends don't justify the means, Varys. I demand access to the human test subjects. I want to see their conditions for myself. Varys laughed, a grating sound that set Thomas's teeth on edge. You have no authority here, human. My work is backed by the Council. They understand the importance of my research. I'll report you to the Ethics Committee, Thomas threatened. They'll shut down your lab. Varys leaned in close, his hot breath washing over Thomas's face. Go ahead. I have friends in high places, human. Council members who are eager to exploit your species' potential. You'll only be wasting your time. Thomas stepped back, his fists clenched at his sides. He turned and walked away, his mind racing. He needed help, someone he could trust. He pulled out his communicator and dialed a familiar number. James, Thomas said when his friend's face appeared on the screen. I need your help. It's about Varys's experiments. James Turner, a fellow human scientist, listened intently as Thomas explained the situation. I'll do whatever I can to help, Thomas. Those test subjects, we can't leave them in Varys's hands. I have an idea, Thomas said. But we'll need inside help, someone who knows the lab's layout and security systems. James nodded. I think I know someone. Zack Saw, a Vorkarian scientist I've worked with before. He's expressed concerns about the Council's lack of ethics. I'll reach out to him. Meanwhile, in his lab, Varys pored over the data from his latest experiments. The human subjects had survived exposure to temperatures that would kill most species, but he needed to push further. He needed to test the limits of their adaptability. He typed up a proposal for a new series of experiments, his excitement growing with each word. Exposure to the vacuum of space, testing regenerative abilities, the possibilities were endless. He sent the proposal to the Council, confident in their approval. Days later, Thomas James and Zaxor stood outside Varys's lab, disguised as a routine inspection team. Zaxor swiped his access card, and the doors slid open with a hiss. Remember, Thomas whispered as they stepped inside, our priority is the human test subjects. We find them, and we get them out, quickly and quietly. 
James and Zaxor nodded, their faces grim with determination. They moved through the sterile hallways, the weight of their mission heavy on their shoulders, the fate of the human test subjects, and perhaps the future of their species, rested in their hands. Thomas's heart pounded as he crept through the sterile corridors of Varys's lab, James and Zaxa close behind. The stench of chemicals and the hum of machinery filled the air. They reached a heavy metal door, and Zaxa swiped his access card. The door hissed open, revealing a scene straight out of a nightmare. Human test subjects lay strapped to examination tables, their bodies ravaged by unspeakable experiments. Some were hooked up to machines that pumped noxious substances into their veins. Others were confined in transparent chambers, their skin blistered and peeling from exposure to deadly pathogens. My God, James whispered, his face pale. How could they do this? Thomas swallowed hard, forcing himself to look closer. One group of subjects caught his eye. They were quarantined behind a shimmering force field, their bodies covered in oozing sores. A biohazard symbol flashed on a nearby screen, indicating a lethal virus. Yet somehow, despite their horrific condition, the subjects still clung to life, their chests rising and falling with shallow breaths. The virus group, Zaxor said grimly. Varys was particularly interested in their immune response. They moved on to another section of the lab, where they found subjects strapped into high-gravity chambers. The intense forces had crushed their bones and ruptured their organs, leaving them broken and bleeding. But incredibly, they too survived, their bodies refusing to succumb. We have to get them out of here, Thomas said, his voice shaking with anger. We can't leave them to suffer like this. They worked quickly, releasing the restraints and carefully lifting the subjects onto hover stretchers. James gathered data chips and physical samples as evidence, while Zaxor wiped the lab's computers to erase any trace of their intrusion. But as they prepared to leave, the lab's doors burst open, revealing Varys and a squad of armed security guards. Thomas and his team froze, the hover stretchers carrying the rescued test subjects between them. Going somewhere, Varys sneered. I'm afraid I can't let you leave with my specimens. Thomas stepped forward, placing himself between Varys and the test subjects. Your specimens, these are human beings, Varys. Living, breathing people that you've tortured in the name of science. Sacrifices must be made for the advancement of knowledge, Varys said coldly. Surely you understand that as a fellow scientist? No, Thomas said, shaking his head. What you've done here isn't science, it's a perversion of everything we stand for. It's unethical, immoral, and wrong. The Council disagrees, Varys said, smiling cruelly. They see the potential in my work, the secrets we could unlock, the power we could wield, and they won't let a few squeamish humans stand in the way of progress. Zaxor stepped forward, holding up a small recording device. Actually, he said, I think they might have a different opinion once they hear this. Varys's eyes widened as he realized the implications. You didn't... I've been recording everything, Zaxor said. Every word, every admission of guilt, and I've already transmitted the evidence to the Ethics Committee. It's over, Varys. Varys's face contorted with rage. You fool, do you have any idea what you've done? My research could have changed the galaxy. He lunged forward, reaching for the hover stretchers. I won't let you destroy my life's work. James moved to intercept him, grappling with Varys as they struggled for control. The security guards raised their weapons, unsure of how to proceed. In the chaos, a single shot rang out. James stumbled back, clutching his chest as a crimson stain spread across his shirt. He collapsed to the floor, his breathing laboured. James! Thomas cried, rushing to his friend's side. Zaxer and Thomas quickly subdued Varys and his guards, binding their hands behind their backs. But Thomas's attention was focused solely on James, cradling his head in his lap as the injured man gasped for breath. Stay with me, James, Thomas pleaded. We'll get you help. Just hold on. But even as he spoke the words, Thomas could see the light fading from James's eyes. The wound was severe, and they were far from any medical facilities equipped to handle human physiology. James gripped Thomas's hand, 
his voice a faint whisper. Don't let this be for nothing, Thomas, promise me. Promise you'll see this through, for the sake of our people. Tears streamed down Thomas's face as he nodded. I promise, James, I won't let you down. James's breath came in ragged gasps, his face pale and slick with sweat. Thomas cradled his friend's head in his lap, his mind racing. He couldn't let James die, not like this, not after everything they'd been through together. Zaxor, Thomas said, his voice shaking. Varys's regeneration tech, could it save him? Zaxor shook his head. It's too risky. We have no idea what it could do to him. The technology is untested, the consequences unpredictable. Thomas looked down at James at the blood soaking through his shirt. It's our only chance. I'll take full responsibility for whatever happens. Please, Zaxor, help me save him. Zaxor hesitated, then nodded. All right, but we have to hurry. They lifted James onto a hover stretcher and rushed him to the regeneration chamber. The machine hummed to life as they carefully placed James inside, the glass door sealing shut with a hiss. Thomas's hands shook as he initiated the process, the chamber filling with a swirling mist. He and Zaxor watched the monitors intently, tracking James's vital signs. Minutes ticked by with no change. Thomas paced the room, his heart pounding. What if they were too late? What if the technology couldn't save him? Suddenly the monitors began to beep rapidly. Thomas rushed over, his eyes widening as he saw James's vital signs stabilizing. The wounds on his chest began to knit together, the flesh regenerating before their eyes. It's working, Thomas breathed. He's healing. Within minutes, James's body had fully regenerated. The chamber door hissed open, and James sat up, blinking in confusion. What happened? he asked, his voice hoarse. Thomas let out a choked laugh, pulling his friend into a tight hug. You're alive, that's what happened. We used Varys's tech to save you. News of James's miraculous recovery spread like wildfire through the council. Thomas and Zaxa were hailed as heroes, their actions exposing Varys's unethical experiments and saving countless lives. The council launched a full investigation into Varys's research. The disgraced scientist was stripped of his position and faced severe legal consequences for his crimes against humanity. In the aftermath, Thomas and James were approached by a group of Vorkarian scientists. They had been secretly working on a project to enhance their own species, using the knowledge gained from studying humans. We want you to join us, the lead scientist said. Your expertise could be invaluable. Together we could unlock the secrets of human adaptability, push the boundaries of what's possible. Thomas and James exchanged a long look. The offer was tempting the potential for scientific breakthroughs immense. But they couldn't shake the feeling of unease, the memory of what had happened in Varys's lab. We need time to think about it, Thomas said finally. This is a big decision, and we want to make sure we're doing it for the right reasons. The Vorkarian nodded. Of course, take all the time you need, but know that we are eager to work with you, to learn from you. The future of our species could depend on it. As the scientist left, Thomas turned to James. What do you think? Should we do it? James sighed, rubbing his newly healed chest. I don't know. Part of me wants to jump at the chance to be on the forefront of something groundbreaking. But after everything we've seen... I know, Thomas said. It's a risk. But maybe it's one worth taking. Maybe we can steer the research in a more ethical direction, make sure nothing like what happened with Varys ever happens again. They fell silent, each lost in their own thoughts. The weight of the decision hung heavy in the air, the future of their species and the galaxy at large resting on their shoulders. Thomas paced back and forth in the lab, his mind racing with the possibilities and the risks of working with the Vorkarian scientists. James sat at a nearby workstation, his brow furrowed as he pored over the data they had collected. I don't know, Thomas, James said, looking up from the screen. Can we really trust them after everything that happened with Varys? Thomas stopped pacing and turned to face his friend. I understand your concerns, James, but think about the potential here. If we can guide this research, make sure it's done ethically, we could unlock secrets about human adaptability 
that could change everything. James sighed, leaning back in his chair. You're right, we can't let our fears hold us back, but we need to be careful. We can't let this power fall into the wrong hands. Thomas nodded, a determined look in his eye. Agreed. We'll work with the Vorkarians, but we'll keep a close eye on everything. Make sure nothing unethical is happening behind closed doors. They spent the next several weeks working closely with the Vorkarian scientists, poring over genetic data and running simulations, and then a breakthrough. Look at this, Thomas, James said, his voice trembling with excitement as he pointed to a display. This gene sequence, it's unlike anything I've ever seen. It's almost like it's designed for rapid adaptation. Thomas leaned in, his eyes widening as he took in the data. You're right, this could be the key we've been looking for, a way to activate the dormant trait in humans. They worked tirelessly, refining their methods and testing their hypotheses. And finally they had it, a safe, reliable way to unlock the full potential of human adaptability. We need to present this to the Council, Thomas said, his voice filled with a mix of excitement and trepidation. This could change everything. But as they prepared for their presentation, alarms began to blare throughout the facility. Thomas and James looked up, confusion and fear etched on their faces. What's happening? James asked, his voice tight. Before Thomas could respond, the doors to the lab burst open, and a group of armed Vorkarians stormed in. They were led by a tall, imposing figure that Thomas recognized instantly. Craxus, he breathed his voice filled with dread. Craxus was a former associate of Varus, a scientist with a reputation for pushing the boundaries of ethical research. Thomas James, Craxus said, a cruel smile twisting his features. Thank you for your hard work, but I'm afraid your services are no longer required. Thomas stepped forward, his fists clenched at his sides. What are you doing, Craxus? This research is for the benefit of all species, not just the Vorkarians. Craxus laughed, a harsh grating sound. You're so naive, Thomas. With this power, the Vorkarians will be unstoppable. We will rule the galaxy, and all other species will bow before us. James grabbed Thomas's arm, pulling him back. We need to get out of here, he whispered urgently. Thomas nodded, his eyes darting around the room, looking for an escape route. But before they could make a move, Craxus's soldiers surged forward, grabbing the scientists and dragging them away. In the chaos, Thomas saw Zaxa being pulled from the room, his eyes wide with fear. Thomas! he cried out, his voice desperate. Thomas struggled against his captors, but it was no use. They were too strong, too numerous. He could only watch helplessly as Zaxor and the other scientists were dragged away, their fates uncertain. As they were hauled out of the facility, Thomas caught a glimpse of the data screens the information they had worked so hard to uncover now in the hands of madmen. His heart sank, knowing the terrible power they had unleashed. But even in that moment of despair, Thomas knew he couldn't give up. He had to find a way to stop Craxus and his extremists before they could carry out their plan. The fate of the galaxy hung in the balance. Thomas and James huddled in a small, dimly lit room, their breath coming in ragged gasps as they tried to process what had just happened. They had barely managed to escape the facility, slipping away in the chaos of the attack. We have to go back, Thomas said, his voice shaking with a mix of anger and fear. We can't let Craxus get away with this. James shook his head, his eyes haunted. Thomas, we barely made it out of there alive. What chance do we stand against an army of Vorkarian extremists? Thomas slammed his fist against the wall, frustration boiling over. We can't just sit here and do nothing. Zaxor and the others are counting on us. We have to find a way to stop Craxus before he can use our research to create his super-soldiers. James was silent for a long moment, his brow furrowed in thought. Finally he looked up, a glimmer of determination in his eyes. You're right. We started this, and it's up to us to finish it. But we need a plan. They spent the next several hours poring over the data they had managed to salvage, searching for any weakness in Craxus's plan, and then a glimmer of hope. Look at this, James, Thomas said, pointing to a schematic on the screen. 
Craxus's soldiers will need to undergo a specific genetic treatment to activate their adaptability trait. If we can find a way to disrupt that process, we might be able to stop them before they can be deployed. James nodded, his mind racing with possibilities. It's risky, but it's our best shot. We'll need to infiltrate the facility where the treatments are being administered. They spent the next several days preparing, gathering what resources they could, and reaching out to what few allies they had left. And then they made their move. The facility was heavily guarded, but Thomas and James managed to slip inside, their hearts pounding with a mix of fear and adrenaline. They made their way to the treatment center, their weapons at the ready. But as they rounded the corner, they found themselves face to face with Craxus himself, flanked by a dozen of his genetically enhanced soldiers. Are you fools? Craxus sneered, his eyes glinting with malice. Did you really think you could stop me? I have the power of human adaptability at my fingertips. I am unstoppable. Thomas stepped forward, his voice steady despite the fear coursing through his veins. You're wrong, Craxus. That power comes with a responsibility to use it wisely, for the benefit of all species. What you're doing is madness. Craxus laughed, a cruel mocking sound. Madness, no, Thomas, this is the future. The Vorkarian Empire will reign supreme, and all who stand in our way will be crushed beneath our feet. With a roar of fury, Craxus launched himself at Thomas, his enhanced strength and speed making him a blur of motion. Thomas barely managed to dodge the blow, rolling to the side and bringing his weapon to bear. But Craxus was too fast, too strong. He batted the weapon aside like a toy and grabbed Thomas by the throat, lifting him off the ground with one hand. James let out a cry of rage and charged forward, firing his weapon at Craxus with everything he had. But the Vorkarian soldiers were on him in an instant, their enhanced reflexes allowing them to dodge the blasts with ease. Thomas struggled against Craxus's grip, his vision starting to blur as the air was squeezed from his lungs, but even in that moment of desperation, he refused to give up. With a last desperate burst of strength, Thomas kicked out at Craxus, his foot connecting with the Vorkarian's knee with a sickening crunch. Craxus howled in pain and dropped Thomas to the ground, staggering back. Thomas scrambled to his feet, his heart racing as he saw James being overwhelmed by the soldiers. He knew he had only one chance to end this. With a wordless cry of determination, Thomas launched himself at Craxus, tackling the Vorkarian to the ground. They grappled for a moment, their enhanced strength making them evenly matched. But then Thomas saw his chance. He grabbed a discarded weapon from the floor and pressed it against Craxus's chest, his finger tightening on the trigger. Place over, Craxus, Thomas panted, his voice ragged with exhaustion. Surrender now and we can end this without any more bloodshed. For a moment, Craxus's eyes flickered with something that might have been fear, but then his face twisted into a sneer. Never, he spat. I will never surrender to the likes of you. Thomas closed his eyes, his heart heavy with the weight of what he knew he had to do. Then you leave me no choice. He pulled the trigger, the blast tearing through Craxus's chest and sending the Vorkarian slumping to the ground, lifeless. Thomas staggered to his feet, his breath coming in ragged gasps as he surveyed the carnage around him. The Vorkarian soldiers lay dead or dying, their enhanced bodies no match for the determination of Thomas and James. But then Thomas's heart stopped, as he saw James lying motionless on the ground, a pool of blood spreading beneath him. No, Thomas whispered, his voice cracking with despair. James, no. He rushed to his friend's side, cradling James's head in his lap. James's eyes fluttered open, his breath coming in shallow gasps. Thomas, he whispered, his voice weak. Did we do it? Did we stop them? Thomas nodded, tears streaming down his face. Yes, James, we did it. Craxus is dead and his soldiers are defeated. James smiled, a faint, pained thing. Good, that's, that's good. His eyes started to drift closed, and Thomas felt a surge of panic. No, James, stay with me. We'll get you help, we'll... But even as he spoke the words, Thomas knew it was too late. James had lost too much blood, his injuries too severe. 
In that moment, Thomas knew what he had to do. He had to use the power they had unlocked, the power of human adaptability, to save his friend. With shaking hands, he reached for the vial of genetic material they had developed, the key to activating the dormant trait. He injected it into James's arm, his heart pounding with a mix of hope and fear. For a long, agonizing moment, nothing happened, but then James's body began to convulse, his muscles spasming as the genetic changes took hold. Thomas watched in horrified fascination as James's skin began to ripple and change, his features shifting and warping as the adaptability trait took hold. His friend was changing before his eyes, becoming something new and unknown. And then it was over. James lay still, his chest rising and falling with steady breaths. Thomas reached out with trembling fingers, feeling for a pulse. It was there, strong and steady. But as Thomas looked down at his friend, he felt a sense of unease wash over him. James's features were different, almost unrecognizable. His eyes, once a warm brown, now glinted with an otherworldly light. James? Thomas whispered, his voice trembling. Are you, are you still in there? James sat up, his movements smooth and fluid, almost unnaturally so. He looked around, taking in the carnage with a detached, almost clinical gaze. I am, he said, his voice flat and emotionless, but I am also something else, something more. Thomas felt a chill run down his spine as he realized the true cost of what he had done. In saving James's life, he had unleashed a power that he barely understood, a power that could change the very nature of what it meant to be human. As they made their way out of the facility, Thomas's mind raced with the implications of what had happened. He had saved his friend, but at what cost? What would the galaxy think of them now, knowing the true power that humans possessed? And what of James, his humanity now forever altered by the activation of his adaptability trait? Would he ever be the same? Or had Thomas condemned him to a life as something other than human? These questions weighed heavy on Thomas's mind as they emerged into the harsh light of day, the wreckage of the facility smoldering behind them. The battle was won, but the war for the future of humanity and the galaxy itself was only just beginning. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.